Hi everybody, it's Aristo. Welcome back. Um, we were fortunate enough to be invited to the last Epoch Multiplayer Invitational Test, which started last Friday morning and just concluded. The team that I launched with, you can see them here, we did a uh, run through the campaign quickly and then made it to Empowered Monoliths in about 10 hours. Uh, here's us fighting the second phase of Majassa and completely out DPSing her heal and getting her down on the first try. The goal of this video is to share my thoughts as Aristo, the gamer, on multiplayer and trade, as there is always a long discussion about these issues across ARPGs. So on multiplayer, with almost 24 hours of experience since the test started on Friday morning, and hundreds of hours playing Last Epoch solo, I'd say that multiplayer brings many new dimensions to the gameplay. First, theory crafting and testing build in class synergies. For example, who can race to echo objectives the fastest? Who can bring single target DPS to obliterate bosses? Who can heal so that squishy DPS builds are viable? And how can the overall class balance in groups then be achieved? When I said multiplayer brings a lot to the table, it does. And I want to take this opportunity to emphasize that 0.9 Last Epoch is not just about multiplayer. In this test, I saw better frame rates than I had before uh, playing solo while in this group with my friends. The art design has changed in some areas, there are new maps, there are loads of new uniques, some of which I demoed on Twitch, and yes, a meteor hungering souls lich? Mm-hmm. Now multiplayer felt very rewarding, as it should. As soon as we hit monoliths, our group's power and synergy just took off. Some of the folks I played with have thousands of hours of solo play, and for the solo players out there, adding multiplayer does not detract from your experience. It adds a lot. For the folks like me with thousands of hours in other ARPGs, like Diablo 3, where I'm honestly used to getting on Discord voice with friends and playing all day, blasting a season launch, and now to streaming it over on Twitch. Here we did dungeons together, we did echoes, we did boss farming, we raced to empowered monoliths, we farmed blessings, everything we had previously done solo. But the fact that we played together gave us the energy to continue blasting. Friday alone we played some 12 hours straight as a group. We felt powerful together, still strong solo, and overall it was a great experience. Now on trade. This might sound a bit controversial, but I deliberately waited a while after the developer's blog on trade to share my views. In short, I have heard a lot of people comment about the theoretical max of a character's power, and then their feeling as if they will not be able to achieve it in the short or medium term. Think, fantastic rolled omnis, or X unique with Y legendary potential on it, and then luck to create a legendary based on that with exalted items with T7 and T6 max rolls. Even getting those exalted items in the first place, I can understand wanting to achieve this, guys, I really do. But sometimes I think the grail chase is conflated with the needing this ultra rare grail item to play a character. And I disagree with this. It's a subtle point I'm making, but the long and short of it is that just because there are items in a game that make you feel like winning the lottery does not mean that A, you need them to blast the content of the game, or B, that you should be able to easily trade for them. For me, at least, it would feel like I'm buying a winning lottery ticket for the price of winning the lottery. It's an empty feeling, and this shows in other ARPGs when folks try a new ladder or league, get to pinnacle content very quickly thanks to trade, and then quit the ladder or league and give all their items and currency away. For those who play lots of ARPGs, I think you know exactly what I'm getting at here. Now, I say this as someone whose vast majority of playtime in Last Epoch was in solo self-found. In fact, I deliberately played my first two characters blind, the first being an Elemental Nova Lightning Blast Sorcerer and then a Warpath Void Knight. I took each to hundreds of corruption blind, and for example, I didn't even find an Ashen Crown on my Sorcerer until past level 100, when someone in my Twitch chat was asking why I casted Elemental Nova on myself. This is an example of being really unlucky in drops and not finding a quote, build enabling item, and I had to use three runes of ascendance to find my first one after I was told that the item existed. Now on gifting. We equipped one person on our team with very well rolled exalted items in less than 20 hours, I think even less than 15. 
At launch, imagine a team like ours doing this during a cycle and doing it for weeks on end. While this does not answer the grail question I raised above, I can emphatically state that gifting to each other, even in its current state, felt very, very powerful. I'm not sure that pointing to the rarity of winning a lottery ticket is a good argument to add more trade to Last Epoch or any other ARPG on the horizon, but I do respect differences of opinion on this. I really just wanted to put this out there and be part of the discussion. I'm always down for discussions like this over on Twitch or on my Discord. Links in the description below along with the developer's blog on trade. Peace out everyone and take care. Enjoy your gaming.